Eli Rakoma is the man behind the famous pictures of former President Idi Amin in the swimming pool. One of those pictures almost got him killed. They were friends who often hang out together, had a cup of tea, or simply spent time on indoor games. But that was before Idi Amin became president and all hell broke loose. Soon, Rakoma realized that the man he loved and trusted had turned into a monster. People were dying under mysterious circumstances. Others simply disappeared. Initially, Rakoma gave Amin the benefit of the doubt, like the true friend he was. But as he would later painfully discover, the Amin he called a friend was something else. He killed my uncle and three cousins and their children, Rakoma recollects. Adding, Archbishop Janani Luam and Uganda's first Prime Minister Benedicto Kiwanuka were both killed. It was painful to accept. And for me, that was it. I hated Amin. Rakoma's assassinated uncle was Nakamaya Bananuka, the then Secretary General of the Ankol Kingdom. I was angry with Amin, very angry. I wanted to confront him, but on second thought, I decided to keep quiet. If he got to know that there was a connection between me and Bananuka's family, he would kill me too, Rakoma narrates. But Rakoma planned the perfect revenge. Having been Amin's close confidant and chief photographer, he had all the pictures of Amin's private life, his children and wives. One of the famous pictures he took was when Amin was diving into the swimming pool at Apollo Hotel, now Sheraton Hotel in Kampala. Amin was only in swimming shorts. There were several other pictures Rakoma took while Amin was swimming, sometimes alone. Sometimes with his children at Jinja Club, which had been his favorite hangout. Since the days when he was still a commander under the Abot I regime, Although Amin had these pictures safely kept away, Rakoma had the negatives which he developed. Determined to scandalize the dictator, Rakoma sold the pictures to an international photojournalist a few days later. The legendary photograph of Amin diving into the swimming pool was published in the New York Times with a caption, Is Amin sinking or swimming? When that picture was published, I knew I was in trouble, Rakoma recalls. He was right. The next thing he knew, Amin's bad boys were storming his studio and shop in Jinja and hunting for him. That day, I was there, but I was dressed in shorts and slippers so they thought I was just an attendant. They asked me, where is this man who is so mean to our president? I told them he had gone to the bank. They searched everywhere and took all the negatives I had. Some of my equipment was also destroyed before they left. I sensed trouble. On the advice of a friend, I fled the country, Rakoma recalls. We were close. He called me and told me he was the president, and I was happy for him. Amin was lively, so comical and friendly. I do not know where he got the heart to kill, Rakoma says. Rakoma cannot put a figure to the number of memorable pictures he might have taken of Amin but he remembers that he was the only person that Amin took along in for his private antics. Once, Amin made a group of British men carry him on their shoulders, while others crawled on the floor. Rakoma was the only photographer called in to take the pictures. Amin used to call himself all sorts of titles, like the President for Life, Field Marshal, and the Conqueror of the British Empire in Africa. He wanted to show the British that he was mightier than them, Rakoma says. Other famous pictures were the clock tower shootings, in which 15 people were killed by firing squad on September 10, 1977. I stood at the top of a mosque downtown to take pictures of the live killings. It was chilling, he says. Rakoma, however, says he never saw Amin kill anyone. I think most of the killings were done under his orders and at night like the day Archbishop Luam was killed. Life after exile. When Rakoma returned from exile in 1979, he resumed his photography business. He later rejoined the presidential press unit under Godfrey Benassi's regime and the subsequent governments. Rakoma remembers taking pictures of the 1980 national elections. When President Yoweri Museveni came to power, Rakoma served as a photographer for presidential functions for one year before he retired. I wanted to concentrate on farming and give more time to my family, he says. 
The 77-year-old lives a quiet life with his wife, Stella, in Macarera Kakoni. His children are all grown up. Incidentally, Rakoma had met Museveni as a boy.